My work consists of telling stories about the human condition. I was quite troubled when I was younger and I questioned my belief system and I started experimenting with drugs. I was quite an introvert so I didn't really talk to anybody. I was more of an observant kid from a young, very young age I was very observant so I didn't really talk to people um, and therefore I never spoke about what I was going through or what I was feeling. I was very reserved. I did try different type of drugs but in the end I kept going back to acid and marijuana. Drugs does affect your memory. It does affect your reality. What you believe, um, it can create sometimes a paranoid feeling. Um, it can create a feeling that people are, could be against you even. So in the long run, it did, do, it did a lot more damage. So I was fortunate enough to go to an art school, the Crane, in Parktown. It was my first time studying art and I loved the experience. My first soulmate, was my best friend. His name was Brom. Quite a spontaneous person, naturally talented when it comes to art and design. And we spent almost every single day together. It was a beautiful friendship. Unfortunately, in his 20s, Brom decided to... So, when we were in our twenties, Brom decided to kind of just end it. He hanged himself. And I, I do miss him. I miss him every single day. I think about him and maybe one day when I see him, I'll, yeah, I will hopefully kick his butt, but <laughs> he will be part of me always. He's part of my heart. He will always be close to me. And I truly believe that he is in a good place. I don't believe people are condemned when they do when I commit suicide. I truly don't. I know he's in a good place and he will always be part of me, his essence, and I still remember him fondly. When I was doing drugs, I tried different type of drugs, but I usually went back to marijuana and acid. Acid was a visual drug. Unfortunately, I started falling behind with my studies. One of the drugs I experimented with were moonflower. It's, it, you can hallucinate on it, you can also die from it if you take too much. So I mean, some friends took way too many and we ended up on the highway, crawling on the highway. The cops picked us up and the next day, my dad coming back from work said to me, you can either go to rehab or we'll force you to go. So once in rehab, I was alone in a, a room and I heard a voice calling my name, but it was quite clear, it was crystal clear. And I mentioned it to a doctor. Next moment, I was booked in a mental facility, in a mental ward. I was given strong medication, which suppressed a lot of emotion. And anxiety attacks started. Basically, I don't know what was happening, but it was a kind of feeling that you kind of feel like you want to die. And I was convulsing on the ground. It was a terrible feeling, but that was my first experience, having a panic attack. The first weekend I could go home, I, just, I overdosed on my own medication. I didn't want to be there anymore. Basically because what a medication did, it suppressed all emotion. I couldn't communicate. It's, uh, imagine a radio station with a buzzing noise and that's all you hear the whole day, every day. And especially because I was told, this is your reality. You won't ever get off this medication. So I overdosed, I didn't want to be here. I tried to, to commit suicide, a friend found me and luckily for my sake, if I look, yeah, she found my parents, found it, uh, I was taken to hospital. I had a seven minute period between life and death. So yeah, I'm still here, I'm still painting, so which is good. <laughs> I was at the mental institution for three months. I was uh, diagnosed with schizophrenia. I went back to studying art. I met some wonderful friends. I still couldn't communicate, but 
art did help me to get through immersion and get through trauma. Uh, my intuition told me it was the wrong diagnosis. And eventually I could get off my medication completely. So I'm not taking any more medication. I've learned to cope with the anxiety attacks. I've learned to, I went from two attacks a day to nothing, basically. So it feels pretty good to feel normal again. Around about that time, I was working on some murals with some friends. We were working from a restaurant to some beautiful mansions on the Vol River. I also did some work for a framing company and I started teaching art lessons. And my first group was based in Bedford View and it just grew from there. I started doing corporate artwork through interior decorators from Beauty Spas to one of the biggest banks in South Africa. I was doing a lot of structuring, a lot of abstract work, which was quite interesting because I used to, I tried to experiment with different mediums as well. On that stage, my anxiety wasn't completely gone, but I focused on teaching art and working for interior decorators. I was working on big scale paintings for architectural interiors, which was helping me with structuring, with inner structuring as well, which was a wonderful thing to go through and experience. Currently, I'm part of a bigger art group that organizes group art exhibitions. And it's a good way to meet new artists, to see what they are about, what the art is all about, basically. And it's a bigger growth experience as well, being part of something much bigger than your own little niche or own little art world. I'm loving painting landscapes on big scale. It's all about layering. It's all about different realities coming forward. So I love um, exploring surrealism. In this stage, I am going towards surrealism more. It's about the conscious and the subconscious mind versus each other. It's about history, because I believe a good art trick is all about history, capturing the past so we can learn from the past. Um, it's essential to capture what's going on right now um, for the future generations to learn from. Because we are here to learn. That's why we're here. That's what I truly believe. I'm just doing it through a beautiful language of doing art so I can capture the essence and hopefully have a good influence on other people as well. I'm a traditionalist at heart. I love looking at art master's techniques, but I also like to mix it up with modern techniques and ways of thinking. Art is a wonderful language. It can influence a lot of people. For me, art is about building your self-esteem. So many times when a student comes to me, somebody is in such a rat race of schedules, work, we need to survive, we need to keep going. Art teaches you to relax, to slow down, to see who you are, where you are in your life right now. And when somebody starts to believe in themselves through a visual growth, it's such a beautiful moment. And I realize their potential being developed and they become so much more. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a universal reward, if I can put it that way. Recently, I studied art therapy, which is also a wonderful way to learn about the human condition, because I'm quite fascinated by what people are about, and I believe art therapy is a little bit more of an alternative therapy form. So is body talk. Body talk I'm completely qualified in, and it's all about where the trauma sits or it could be about circulation, it could be about trauma and where it sits in the body. And it's a, quite a direct way of helping somebody. I have worked with my, some of my art students with body talk and a little bit of art therapy to help them in return, to give them a little bit more focus and to see where they need to go to guide them a little bit as well. A lot of the students coming here talk about their own problems, what they are going through, where they are in their life, what they want to accomplish. Art helps them to focus, to create an inner calm. I've created a sanctuary for the students coming here so they can just be themselves, where they can grow, where they can explore different mediums, different themes, where they can build their own self-confidence and become larger than life and do much bigger artwork on a much bigger scale. So it's endless, it's endless possibilities. I don't know what the future holds, but I have overcome so much and I'm grateful to be here and there's so much more out there to explore.